So in this video, I want to present the Hodgkin-Huxley model of the squid giant axon uh, in its entirety. We sort of talked about it before, and I've shown you uh, this equivalent circuit diagram, which shows uh, the dynamics of the model. Um, <clears throat> but so far, we've just been talking about this as a proxy for all conductance-based models, and I think it might help to actually show you the concrete parameters and how this model specifically works. Uh, as we've already mentioned, this model contains both uh, passive components and active components, and these active components um, have variable, or modeled as variable resistors that are uh, both voltage and time dependent, and we'll see exactly how those equations, um, or how those processes are modeled. So we've already talked about uh, the basis for conductance-based models, that the uh, capacitive current is equal and opposite the current flowing over those uh, resistors. Uh, so this on the right um, is the current flowing across the resistors, and this on the left is the uh, capacitive current. So, and we've also already mentioned how each of these ionic currents are modeled. Uh, so this here is the expression uh, for a, um, or this is how a conductance-based model uh, models uh, multiple ionic currents. So each, so if we have n uh, currents, the current uh, flowing across each individual uh, resistor is given by Ohm's law, um, which we've talked about before. So each uh, current can have its own conductance, uh, G of I, and that conductance can be voltage and time dependent, and then the equilibrium potential for each current uh, can also be different. And in the previous, uh, or in the last video, I uh, sort of walked you through this step from here to here, how each uh, ionic current is modeled by a maximal conductance, a set of uh, gating variables, and then the driving force. Um, and Specifically, the maximal conductance can be different uh, from current to current. The, uh, the gates are obviously independent <coughs> from current to current, and the equilibrium potential is also uh, individual to each current. And then there's one final, uh, one final component that I left out for simplicity so far, and that is that uh, the gating variables are sometimes raised uh, to an exponent. So we'll say m to the p and h to the q, where p and q are integer numbers. Uh, that are pos positive um, or equal to zero integer numbers. And those can also be uh, different from current to current. And what's nice about this is for um, conductances like the delayed rectifier potassium conductance, uh, which doesn't have an inactivation variable, you can set um, Q equal to zero. Um, and doing that automatically sets the inactivation uh, gate to be constitutively open, essentially, or equal to one. And therefore, um, you can, th this provides you the flexibility of having both activation and inactivation uh, gates. So you can set Q equal to zero um, for non-inactivating, or sometimes they're called uh, persistent currents. Uh, Q equals zero for persistent currents. And the addition of these uh, two parameters here is, uh, please don't let that confuse you, because they're only added to essentially make this model fit experimentally um, collected data uh, better. And there is some interpretation. You can loosely interpret uh, P and Q as the number of activation gates and the number of inactivation gates. So let's say, for example, there were three activation gates, then that's sort of equivalent to having three M uh, variables. And if you raise it to the third power, you're basically modeling a channel that has three activation gates, all of which uh, are independent of each other and can be independently open. That interpretation um, I mean, it's a fine interpretation. It, whether or not that reflects biological reality, or the extent to which that reflects biological reality, is uh, disputed. Um, so don't take it too literally, but that's one way that you can interpret those parameters. And I've already uh, mentioned uh, before how you can model uh, channels that are switching between active and inactive states uh, according to the rates alpha and beta, where alpha uh, corresponds to the rate of activation and beta the uh, reverse. So alpha m, specifically in the case of a channel, would be the rate at which the activation gates are open. Beta m is the rate at which the activation gates are closing, and both of those are voltage dependent. And the h uh, is the inactivation gate, so alpha h is the rate at which the inactivation gate is open, and the beta h is the rate at which the inactivation gate uh, is closing. So the only thing I need to tell you at this point is uh, what these uh, functions for alpha and beta uh, look like. And depending on the conductance-based model you're simulating, they're going to be different, uh, but I'm just going to show you uh, them for the Hodgkin-Huxley model. So these are all of the Hodgkin-Huxley um, equations that describe the model, and I've already uh, mentioned uh, most of them, so you can see the m, the m and h here, and then these are the alphas and betas, 
and this uh, first equation is the membrane equation. Uh, so I, I found this um, offline, and rather than write all these out by hand, um, I just figured I would post this, and it'd probably be easier for you to read anyway. Uh, and I'll provide a link uh, to the website that I got this from in the description. So I just want to go through this um, pretty quickly because, you know, there's a lot here, but it's they're really um, not that complicated. So this I here, this is what we've been calling uh, I EXT, or the amount of current that you're injecting into the membrane. And generally, um, depending on your modeling application, you often just consider this to be zero. So um, I wouldn't necessarily worry about this at the, at the moment, but that's what that is. Um, so then we have C times dV dt, that's the capacitive current, and then all of this junk here are the ionic currents. And remember, in the equivalent circuit that I showed you at the beginning, there's a uh, potassium current, a sodium current, these are the two active currents, and then there's a leak current, which is a uh, passive. So, so the green would be the active, and the purple is the passive components of this membrane. Um, okay, so then... So, so that's fine. You can see that the uh, potassium only has a activation gate and no inactivation, and it's raised to the fourth power. The sodium uh, current has active or activation and inactivation. Activation is raised to the third power. Inactivation uh, just is not exponentiated. Um, and then these are the alpha and beta equations that describe the gating variables. So you'll notice that um, the uh, potassium potassium current is gated by a variable called n rather than m and h. Um, th that's just the notation that they decided to use. Um, so that, don't be fooled by that. It's just another uh, gating variable. So all the gating variables are of this basic form. And then the last thing is just what these uh, alpha and beta equations are. And here they all are. And these are fit to match experimental data. And I think in I don't know, in the next video or one of the videos in the near future, I'll talk about how you can estimate these equations using experimental data. Um, but you can just see that these are just simple, um, well, maybe not so simple, but um, you know, somewhat ugly equations of voltage. So they are simple, even though they look sort of um, you know, messy. So th these really aren't that big of an issue. You can just plug in for any given voltage, determine your alpha and beta, and then you can relate these to the uh, steady state. Um, so pretend we're talking about the gating variable m. Just any gating variable steady state is going to be alpha over alpha plus beta, and then the time constant is uh, 1 over alpha plus beta. So you can you know, just plug in and determine what these steady state and uh, time constant equations are, and then you can numerically solve it. And in fact, we've already seen in uh, the last few videos how you can uh, solve the membrane equation when uh, the steady state is constantly changing. So we're just it's just the same thing. The steady state and time constant uh, are changing over the course of the simulation, and you just estimate them at any given time, and then you can numerically solve um, numerically solve using that uh, those approximations. So I'll, I'll definitely in the future either post some code or go over exactly how you can numerically solve uh, these equations. Um, so that's uh, pretty much it for this video. You know, I, sh I showed you all the equations for the Hodgkin-Huxley model, and in the future we'll uh, look at some voltage traces and think about what, how the model behaves and get some intuition about, you know, why it's an interesting model and why it was worthy of a Nobel Prize. Uh, in the future, um, I want to talk about how to actually fit, um, fit the alpha and beta equations that I showed you to experimental data. And I think that I will do a video on that in the somewhat near future. But for those of you uh, who don't want to wait and are interested, you should definitely check out this uh, paper if, if you can. Um, it, unfortunately, it's not open access, but uh, this paper actually is very, very thorough, and it's not groundbreaking by any means, but they, um, it really goes into all the details about you know, what the alpha and betas mean, and then how can you estimate them properly, because people um, in the past did not always, and actually people still do not always, estimate them properly. So uh, this is just a very thorough and well-done paper, and um, it's, it's honestly one of my favorite papers that um, I've ever read, and it, I think it's sort of a shame that people who do um, this sort of basic uh, research that, you know, it might not be groundbreaking, um, but they, you know, really took, and took a problem that they could solve and solved it very thoroughly, and I think, you know, that deserves more recognition um, than people often get for doing something like that. So uh, I'll, I'll probably talk about this paper um, in the future, but uh, for those of you who um, don't want to wait, uh, you can go ahead and you know, sort of dive into this paper uh, on your own and see if you can uh, see if you can get anything out of it.